Today we'll be talking about risk calculations involving consanguinity. Now, whenever you have a risk calculation involving consanguinity, you have to take special precautions. Normally, what you can do if you're asked what is the risk of having an affected child, you can identify the risk of the father of say being a carrier of a disease, and then you can identify the risk of the mother of being a carrier of a recessive disease. And then you can multiply those numbers by one half times one half, so by one fourth. And that will give you the risk of having a child with a recessive disease. However, when we have the situation of consanguinity, we can't always estimate these probabilities independently. Sometimes we have to account for the fact that these probabilities are in fact dependent on the same value that is the same affected relative. So good to keep that in mind as we go along. I'll start by reading the question that we'll be discussing today. A couple who are first cousins presents for preconception counseling. The brother of their shared asymptomatic grandfather was affected by Joubert syndrome, an autosomal recessive disorder with complete penetrance. What is their risk of having a child with Joubert? Okay, so first thing to note is that we're being asked about the couple's risk of having a child with a recessive disease. And we are also told that this couple is consanguineous. So that is, they share a set of grandparents. And whenever there's a risk calculation dealing with consanguinity, I tend to approach these with extra precaution, and we'll see why that is here in just a second. But like most risk assessments involving a family history, I like to start by drawing a pedigree. And I've drawn that for us here. So here we have the couple, H and I, and we can see that they're first cousins. So by definition, they share a set of grandparents in common. And what we're trying to calculate is the risk that if H and I have a child, that this child will be affected with Joubert. So one way to go about answering this question would be to calculate the probability that each person in the pedigree is a carrier given that or conditional on the fact that their immediate ancestor is a carrier. So the only exception to that will be person B, who's sort of the person at the start of the pedigree. Their probability in this case is two thirds. Again, this is because both parents of A and B, even though we don't see them here, they're both carriers. So person B has a two thirds chance of being a carrier. And so if person B, let's say we knew they were a carrier, what would be E's chance of being a carrier? Well, that'll be one half. 50-50 chance if you are a carrier. One of your alleles has a variant. The other allele does not have a variant. So you have 50-50 chance of passing on the allele that has the variant on it if you're dealing with a recessive condition. And the same is true over here for person F. Their chances of being a carrier are also one half. And then we can do the same math here for person H. So given that person E is a carrier, we know that their probability of being a carrier now is one half. And then the same for person F. If they are in, in fact a carrier, we know that person I in this case is going to be a carrier <clears throat> with probability one half. And then if both H and I are carriers, we know that they have a one half probability of each passing on their variant to their child and subsequently having a child with Joubert. Now, a shortcut that we can use to calculate the risk in this case of having an affected child would be to multiply each of these probabilities together. So we can do that, essentially take two thirds times one half times one half times one half times one half, one half times one half. 
So there's six one halves here. So that's two over three times one half to the sixth power. And if we simplify this, we'll get two thirds times one over 64. We can simplify this even further and we'll end up with one over 96. And this is the correct answer in this case, that risk of having an affected child with Joubert given this pedigree is one over 96. So this is a shortcut that you can use on exams to calculate the probability that a child has a recessive disease if you have consanguinity. Some of you may be saying, okay, why is this not one over 144? I'll show you a situation where one over 44 would be the correct answer. And that's this situation here. So we have, in this case, a husband and wife who present for preconception counseling. The husband's paternal grandfather has a brother with PKU, so that's here. And then the wife's maternal grandmother also has a brother with PKU. So let's say that this condition is completely penetrant. What would be this couple's risk, 3-1 and 3-2, of having a child with PKU? So kind of similar situation here, except that we do not have consanguinity. So no consanguinity. And this actually makes the problem easier, in my opinion. What we can do in this case is start by calculating the risk that 1, 2, and 1, 5 are carriers. And we know that that risk is 2 over 3, essentially the same logic we used in the previous question. And we can use, in fact, a similar approach. We can say, okay, given that this person is a carrier, if we knew for sure what is their chance of passing on the disease allele to their offspring. And that's one over two. And same thing for this person, two, two to three, one. What is their chance if they are a carrier of passing on this variant? That's also one over two. All right, let's do the same thing on this side. Now we know that one, five, the chance of them passing on the disease variant to two, three is one half. And then the chance of two, three, passing it on to three, two, that probability is also one half. So what we could do is to calculate now the chances that each parent is a carrier. To do that, for three, one, we take two thirds times one half times one half. This gives us one over six. Then we could do the same for three, two. This would be two thirds times one half times one half. And this is also one over six. And so then we can calculate, okay, what is the chance given that these are the probabilities that each of this person's parents are carriers, one over six, what is the chance that they have a child with a recessive disease? And we know that the chance of them passing on the allele if they are a carrier is one half. And so we can essentially take those one sixth. And in this case, we can multiply them together. That is okay because there's no dependencies. These probabilities are not depending on any shared ancestors. They are fully independent of each other's. When I say probabilities, I mean the probability that three one and three two are carriers. So we can take one six times one six and multiply this by one half times one half. It's going to be one over 36 times one over four. And this is equal to one over 144. So this would be a situation where we do need to account for the two thirds probability twice because we have two sides of the family. Each of these individuals have a two thirds risk of being a carrier. And so we need to account for those which we did in our calculation. So that's how this calculation differs from our previous question, where we essentially only had a single two thirds contributing to the overall probability. So again, something you want to make sure to watch out for on exams that you are 
adjusting for the probabilities, especially if there's consanguinity appropriately. And this slide just kind of takes us through a process that you can use if there is no consanguinity in the pedigree. So very important if the consanguinity is not present in the pedigree, then you can use this approach here, this four step approach. Essentially, you're finding first the father's probability of being a carrier, then the mother's probability of being a carrier. So in the previous case, that was one, one over six and one over six. And then we can multiply those probabilities together. So we get one over 36. And then we can multiply this result by one half times one half or one over four. And this will give us one over 144. And these two one halves being the probabilities that each of these individuals, three one and three two, pass on their disease allele to their child. So this would be the, the risk of having an affected child in this pedigree. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can subscribe to my monthly newsletter with board style questions for genetic exams. And you can also buy me a coffee to show your support for the channel. Thank you.